Thank you, Mr. Davidson. Now is the time for Sir Oshi, please. Principal University of Edinburgh. So good afternoon. I'm, I'm a pedagogue, so I will st stand at the lectern. Uh, can I just say what a tremendous uh, pleasure it is to be here at Tech de Monterey. Uh, Tech de Monterey is a partner uh, with the University of Edinburgh and 20 other leading universities around the world, including British Columbia, West Virginia, uh, and Peking. And it's a very, very, so I know quite a lot about you uh, through Enrique, who I take as a very good friend, and it is uh, for me a tremendous uh, pleasure to, to be here. It is also a tremendous pleasure to be in Mexico. Some of us have just come from Guadalajara. A slightly mixed pleasure. Um, part of the mixedness is some of us have just escaped from being trapped uh, with a thousand other university presidents, and that is not all wonderful. Uh, but on the other hand, we had absolutely superb uh, Mexican uh, music and dance, quite, quite stunning cultural, uh, which my wife and I found really moving. Um, I'm going to be a little parochial and to start on talking about internationalization from the point of view of my own university. University of Edinburgh was founded in 1583, uh, more than 400 years ago. Like the other three Scottish ancient universities, we were essentially uh, founded uh, because we, were this, this, we in Scotland at that time were dissatisfied with Oxford and Cambridge as providing an unsatisfactory education. And we were quite self-consciously modeled on the University of Paris and the way the University of Paris used philosophy uh, <clears throat> and basic philosophy to underpin all, all of its teaching. And that is interesting it, to show that universities throughout their history have been deeply international. Um, and when we uh, appointed our first major group of four regents, that is four senior professors, with money from King James the Sixth, James the Seventh of Scotland, he gave us the money with a rule, a very good rule, that said we could not appoint professors from Scotland or from England, that we had to go to the major universities of the time, and we took our professors from particularly the Dutch universities, Leiden and Utrecht. Uh, which in that, at that point were leading the world um, in medicine and in science. In the 17th century, and this relates to Martin, Martin Davidson's points in a way, uh, we appointed a professor of or Oriental and Hebrew languages, and it was a self-conscious attempt 350 years ago to say we don't, we mu it is not enough to understand the European languages. We must also understand Sanskrit. We must also understand Hebrew. So a very international outlook. In the 18th century, Edinburgh, like the other three ancient Scottish universities, became the model for the United States. As the United States developed, they asked the question, what should a university system be like? They looked at Oxford and Cambridge and sensibly rejected that model, the narrow, enclosed, short three-year degree in a little house, and instead said, we want a broad. And they essentially took a version of the French model, but they took the Scottish version of the French model. And so the degree you see in the United States, where you start at 17, two years general, two years very focused, that is the Scottish degree imported uh, to the United States, as they also imported a lot of their university leadership from Scotland as they were setting up places like Yale and Princeton and Penn and such. And there we see a real sort of, again, an international transfer. And when you look at the history of universities and you look 400 years ago at somewhere like Edinburgh, you will see the students already described as nations. And the university expected to have students from different countries as a normal thing that it would have. In the 18th century, for, in the 19th century for the University of Edinburgh, one big important area was Africa. And we have tremendous pride in the fact that the first student to leave China in 1852 came to the University of Edinburgh to, st to study medicine. And the first student uh, to leave Japan you know, following the Meiji Restoration in 1871 again came uh, to Edinburgh. And again, very much different parts of the world looking at each other. Uh, for the University of Edinburgh, um, our strong development has been in continental Europe in the 20th century and, and links there rel rel in a more broad sense. And if you look at us, and in some ways Edinburgh is like 
um, the rest of the British system. In, certainly in terms of our big weak point, if you look at from an international point of view, the big weak point at the University of Edinburgh is Latin America. Uh, we only have 44 students. We're a very big university. We only have 44 students from Mexico. If you contrast that with, we have 1,500 students from the United States. And from the other, again, from the other uh, countries in Latin America, like Brazil, Colombia, Argentina, very small numbers. And if you look, I think, at the, and that's why I think this event is very important. If you look at the British universities, very well connected to the United States for historical reasons, connected to Europe, many of us, like my university, strong connections to China and Japan, very weak connections to Latin America. So I really, I look to the British Council uh, in Mexico and in the British Council in Latin America to help us in that. What is internationalization for? And I will make a, a slightly stronger assertion than Martin Davidson, and I will sound a little bit like some, a contestant in a beauty pageant. What is internationalization for? The main thing it is for is for world peace. And I'm quite serious in this. Uh, students are very idealistic people. People who work in universities are very idealistic. And the fundamental purpose that underpins why do we learn these different languages, why do we do these mutual exchanges, a fundamental purpose is we do not want world wars. We do not want people setting off nuclear weapons. And to, do, and to achieve that, we must understand each other very well. So, for example, at the University of Edinburgh, one of our most important centers is a center for understanding the Arab world. We are the biggest teacher of Arabic in Britain. Uh, we have ex very extensive um, and determined attempts to ensure that Britain, and we have a leadership position for Britain in this regard, has a, Britain uh, and the rest of Europe has a much better understanding. Like, so it is a very, I think, a very fundamental thing. And when you look at cultural understanding, and obviously, for the individual student, there will be the gain. They'll learn new food. They'll make new friends. The, science, the professor will learn new research techniques. But there is something much more important, which is by doing internationalization, the universities are saying we are inherently things that, when it comes to it, we belong to the world. We are located in countries. Tech de Monterey is in Mexico, University of Edinburgh in Scotland. So we are, have country locations, but by virtue of our history, we are actually world institutions, and therefore it is extremely important to support exchange. And if you look at the big challenges that face the world, climate change, zoonotic diseases, <coughs> diseases like HIV, AIDS and such that jump from one person uh, to another, issues like this, then these are important things to you, for the universities to work collectively. Tech de Monterey has growing strengths. So, for example, in, in climate change, in um, uh, biotechnology, it cannot do this work on its own any more than Edinburgh can. It depends on the sort that we have very good, we're developing very good partnerships at the PhD level with Tech de Monterey, and that's something that the universities must do. So when it comes to it, the mechanisms are we take our research-led teaching, we do joint postgraduate programs where people and ideally get a degree from more than, you know, get two degrees, a degree from Tech de Monterey, a degree from Edinburgh. We exchange staff. But the internationalization we are doing is not new. It's a deep part of university history. And the fundamental purpose has to be to make world peace more likely. Thank you very much.